you don't need to become a massive organization before you have order. You can be going out to win souls with three people. You designate one person to coordinate apostolic mapping. Where and where you need to go to. They do a survey. You coordinate another person who is in charge of media publicity. And then one person is preaching. That's how you make impact. And if you make impact like that, you can collect the impact. You can give account of that impact. And you can move progressively from one level to another. And the same applies to your business. Listen, don't do business haphazardly. You can't go anywhere. There should be a threshold that expenditure cannot go past. There should be a threshold of savings. There should be a threshold of investment. See, this is how business is done. Because you can't make progress if all that comes in is all that goes out. And there is nothing regulating it. Sent people have structures. They have administration. They are orderly and organized people. It's a credential for a man who is sent. And then finally, because of our time, I'll stop here. The fifth credential of a sent man is power. If you don't have authority, you'll be a victim. I've told you several times, Luke 24, 49, Jesus said to them, wait until you are endued with power from on high. Don't go telling people, I was the one who went with him to Canaan at the wedding. I was the one who was coordinating those who were fetching water. You will be cut off. Don't go telling people, I came with him to Galilee the other time. I saw you. See, this is a generation where people want to use politics to become relevant. If you are dealing only with men, politics would have worked. But we are dealing with demons. We are dealing with principalities and powers. You need personal empowerment. If you don't have it, you can't be sent. Mark 3.14 He called them to be with him that he might send them. Why are they with him? Number one, to learn character. And number two, to receive empowerment. And he said, tarry until you are endued with power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Not many days from now you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You shall receive power. Listen, all of you graduating tonight, don't leave this auditorium until you have received power. Because you will need power to make a difference. It takes a lot of authority to make a difference. Because without power, you can advance the vision. Without power, you cannot counter opposing forces. This is why you need power. And power in this kingdom is not a very difficult thing. Why is it so? Because you are not the author of the power. Your job is to understand how to use the power that has been made available. And when you read the life of the apostles, you will discover that they had few keys and few channels from whence they drew power. And I want to zero in on one very quickly. The apostles had channels from whence they drew power and those channels never fail. You look at them, they kept operating that channel. The first channel the apostles used to access power is the channel of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1, the moment they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they went and manifested power. And so for them, power is an overflow of the Holy Ghost. So whatever you need to do until the Holy Ghost overflows from you, you must do it. And one of the things they discovered triggers the overflow of the Holy Ghost was prayer. That is why in Acts chapter 4, when they were beaten, the Bible said they returned to their own company. And they lifted their voices and they prayed. From verse 28, they told God, behold their threatenings. It they grant that your, your servants might receive the spirit of boldness to preach the word and it said by stretching forth thy hand that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child and the bible said the place where they were was shaken and they were filled again with the holy spirit in verse 33 the bible said and with great power god gave witness to the resurrection of jesus and great grace was upon them so they knew power is not a difficult thing what must you do to be overflown by the holy spirit and i've taught you here there are many things to do for the overflow of the holy ghost to come number one is prayer it says building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost when you build up yourself it means you are charging up yourself and so if you want to walk in power make sure you remain charged 
I told you, worship can stir up the power of God. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible said, Elisha said, Get me a minstrel. And he said, As the minstrel began to play, the man began to prophesy. Because when genuine worship goes forth, the Holy Ghost moves. Number three, I told you, channel for power is revelation. Every time you do business with the word of God, you stir the Holy Ghost. You stir the Holy Ghost. Because Ezekiel 2 verse 1, he said, as he spake unto me, the Spirit entered me. So the word of God is not primarily for educating you. He is for filling you with the Spirit. He said, be not drunk with wine. Wearing is excess. He said, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves. That's meditation. Hagar. Talking the word to yourself. In psalms, in hymns, in spiritual song. Making melody to the Lord. Making melody. As you talk the word of God to yourself. As you listen to the word of God. The Holy Ghost overflows your soul. And it flows out of you. That overflow is power. Listen, please. Don't run from this meeting today and say, Oh, I've done foundation school. The apostle prayed for me. Keep yourself charged. You will need power in order to operate successfully as a saint man. And one of the ways to operate in power is to remain filled with the Holy Ghost. This is why Paul was teaching in 2 Corinthians 3.14. He said, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. The key there is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The love of God is why God sent Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is everything Jesus did in order for you to be accepted in the beloved. But the communion of the spirit is what we bring validation to the first two operations. So a man who doesn't know how to engage the Holy Ghost to be overflooded with power cannot operate as a saint man. If you go with zeal and challenge your boss, you will suffer for four years. You hear a story that, ah, there was a Christian who went to the bank and his boss spoke and he stood up and said, no, I'm a child of God. And I said this, say that. If you are not charged, you will regret why you said that for the rest of your life. The first thing they will hide your file for four years. And all the recommendations that will go to headquarters will be negative. And if you are not careful, you will lose your job. And the frustration may make you begin to curse God. Because what you are doing is not rooted in life. What you are doing is copy and paste. And copy and paste is dangerous if there is no foundation. They told you that, oh, somebody saw terrorists. And they were shooting people. And he stood up and came out and challenged them. And they shot him and he didn't enter. Oh God, don't try it. The person who stood and they shot and he didn't enter was moved by the Holy Ghost. It's a holy man of God spake as they were moved. If you are not moved and you carry story in your head and you go and stand, they will shoot you. We will come there and pick your corpse. And you know what the Bible said? Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of a saint. You will go to heaven gallantly as one of the martyrs. I'm telling you, people are not paying spiritual prizes to operate spiritual dimensions. They are just talking. You think what you are saying here is a joke? These things are real, but there are foundations. Make sure you are always filled with the Spirit. Be filled, be filled, be filled with the Spirit. That's one of the emphasis of the apostles. They were filled. They didn't do things out of the stirring of the flesh. They did things out of the move of the Spirit. They were filled. They were filled. Keep yourself filled in the Spirit. Otherwise, you will have momentary euphorias. After two weeks, you are excited. After three months, you go down. You go to another meeting. You get stirred up. You are not supposed to live like that. See, pattern your life after the principles that get you stirred up. Let it be the pathway for your navigation. And you will see that all the stories you heard, you too will replicate them. Because if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, what the Holy Ghost did through one, He can do through you as well. Are you following? Be filled with power. The power is already there, but it takes tearings of the spirit to walk in it. It takes tearing. Stay fed. Stay charged. Stay filled. Don't allow anything to deplete you. Some people are so dry that they can feel it. Yet they keep going on in life. What risk is that? You are dry, 
you know you are dry and you are moving out after you have declared the name of Jesus publicly you don't know that devils are interested in your destruction how can you go out when you are dry don't try it the moment the apostles knew they were dry the Bible said they ran back to their company it's a risk to move around empty and dry when you are empty go back to recharge because you are useless all the potentials are intact but they can't work it's like your phone the phone still has the capacity to stop the net it still has the capacity to make calls it still has the capacity to flash light it still has the capacity to do everything it always has but there is no charge and because there is no charge the phone has become a piece of metal that's the problem with many Christians they have the anointing they have the power of God they have the wisdom of God but they are not charged so they become like a piece of meat that the devil can pounce upon any day, any time. Keep yourself charged. Every man sent, don't joke with power. And one of the triggers of power is the continual infilling of the Holy Spirit. They return to their company. They return to their company. When you are charged, anything is possible. The second trigger for power is the gospel. When you know the gospel and preach the gospel, it's like firing a loaded gun. This is why when you study the Acts of the Apostles, they were always preaching. Because they knew preaching is a trigger of the power of the gospel. Paul was speaking in Romans 1.16. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believed. The gospel is the power of God. But there is a way to trigger that power. And all of the apostles knew. This is why they didn't just understand the gospel. They preached the gospel. Because the power of the gospel is released when it is preached. If you don't preach the gospel, the power will be bottled up. The moment you begin to preach the gospel, power is released. Let me show you. Everywhere in the Bible where the gospel was preached there was a testimony of the supernatural everywhere if you read it either it is there immediately or it is there in context matthew chapter 4 verse 23 the bible said jesus went everywhere even jesus even jesus i'm showing you see these things we do is not magic you know people don't know these things anymore so the few people who are manifesting God, they gang up and say they are fake. How can you be fake if you are filled with the Holy Ghost? If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, even if you don't do anything, the Holy Ghost will overflow you. The Bible said they touched Jesus, virtue left him and healed them all. Mark 6 19 or Luke 6 19. When you are filled, the thing flows out of you. So the question you should be asking is Is this still possible to be filled with the Holy Ghost? If it is still possible to be filled with the Holy Ghost Then the question of being fake does not exist The only time you can say Everybody walking in power is fake Is when it becomes impossible to be filled with the Holy Ghost Because if you are filled with the Holy Ghost The Holy Ghost will overflow you And the outcome is power The question is Are people still preaching the gospel? If they are preaching the gospel There must be power Because the preaching of the gospel produces power So the only time you can say What is happening is faith Is when what is being preached is not the gospel If what is being preached is the gospel Power is inevitable Matthew 4 verse 23 See what the Bible said And Jesus The Bible said went to every city And every village Preaching the gospel It said he went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases amongst the people. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. He went to all villages and all cities. What was he doing? Preaching the gospel and healing every sickness and every disease. Why? The gospel is the power of God. The moment the gospel is preached, power is released. So it's either you are filled with power or you produce power through preaching. And this is why most of you who went out on soul winning, you were shocked the miracles you were seeing. 
Not because you were overflooded with the Holy Ghost, but because you were preaching the message. The moment you start preaching the message, it's the responsibility of the Holy Ghost to validate it. And one of the ways the Holy Ghost validates the gospel is by signs and wonders. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 20. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Verse 20, he said, and they went. And he said, the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. The trigger for miracles is to preach the gospel. Anybody can walk in miracles. And I'm talking about any dimension of miracles. Your job is to know the gospel and to preach it. The moment you preach the gospel, the responsibility for miracles and signs and wonders becomes the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 4. Hear what the Bible said. I'm telling you this so that you will live here with confidence. Because every one of us doing what we are doing, this is our secret. If you are looking for any special secret anywhere, there is none. Many times I go to preach, I feel empty. The moment I know I'm empty and I don't have time to refill, I look for the gospel. Because I know if I preach the gospel, the Holy Ghost enters his responsibility of confirming it. He said, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. You, these things can escape you. They can sleep from you. That's why you need to meditate on it and teach it consistently. Because you can lose it. Verse 2. He said, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard it. He said the gospel of salvation was first of all what? Preached by the Lord and then confirmed to us by those who heard it. Now, see what the Holy Ghost did in verse 4. See the way the Holy Ghost confirms the gospel. He said, And God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Everywhere you see powerlessness, the first sign is that the gospel is not preached. Anybody who preaches the gospel will see the power of God. So I can tell you the reason there is so much powerlessness in Africa is because 90% of what we are preaching is not the gospel. I'm not saying there are no preachers. I'm not saying we are not talking. But we are preaching African religion. All our messages is on fatherhood, on honor, on sacrifice, on reverence, on everything that makes us relevant. And that's why our messages must be sophisticated to make us feel important. But the apostles were not validated by the sophistication of their message. They preached the gospel in its simplicity. And the moment they were done, the Holy Ghost shows up and it goes on display. Because when the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit goes to work. The Holy Ghost will only work if the gospel is preached. I am not ashamed. Of the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. This is the secret of the apostles. Every one of them was a preacher of the gospel, and as they preached it, signs and wonders was normal amongst them. Philip was a deacon, he wasn't even ordained an apostle, and he was not the type of deacon we have now. They were ordained to be ushers of food, and the Bible said, Acts chapter 8. Philip went down to Samaria, verse 5. He said he preached Christ there. And he said the whole city. If one man takes a city today, do you know how we will explain it? That this man has stature. He has territorial and apostolic authority over territories. Philip was not a statured apostle. The only weapon Philip went with was the message of Christ. He said he preached Christ there. The whole city was full of joy. And what happened? Go to verse 6. It said, And there was great joy in the city. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. What were the miracles? It's not headache. It's not, I had back pain. I'm okay. See the miracles. It's the unclean spirits crying with loud voice. 
came out of many that were possessed. These are madmen. Philip was cleansing madmen, not with a special anointing, but with the simple message of the gospel. I'm not saying there are no special anointings. I'm not saying there are no men who have stature, but I'm giving you the foundational rudiment of power for everyone who is sent. Madmen were cleansed, and he said, and many taken with palsies. These are crippled and lame men. The witch here ministry. That is the most universally accepted ministry. Many who were maimed and carried with palsy and were lame. The Bible said they were healed. What was the secret of Philip? He preached Christ. He preached Christ. Listen, you are not going out with a feeling. We are not giving you feelings from this auditorium. As we impart you and give you the message of the gospel, you will go out with that message. You will preach it. Some will be excited. Some will not be excited. Their feelings don't matter. When you preach, step aside and leave the Holy Spirit and see what the Holy Ghost will begin to do. You know, when miracles happen, even you, your mouth will drop open. What did I do? You did nothing. You only preached Christ. And the moment you preach Christ, the Holy Ghost went to war. This is why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 1, he said, when I came to you, although I am an orator, he said, I did not come to you with excellency of speech, declaring unto you the testimonies of God. He said, I choose to know nothing among you, save Christ and Him crucified. He said, my preaching and my teaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Preaching and teaching of what? Christ crucified. And he said, that preaching became the demonstration of the spirit and power. Listen, you will need power as you go out. But the secret for power is to know the gospel and to preach it. When you go anywhere and you feel helpless, preach the gospel. When you go anywhere and you are rejected, preach the gospel. When you go anywhere and the territory is difficult, preach the gospel. When you go anywhere and you see impossibility, preach the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's why I took time last week to show you the gospel. And I show you, showed you one of the messages of the gospel is what? Christ declared to be the son of God by power and the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. When you go to a place and you feel handicapped, tell them, I came to preach to you about Jesus Christ. And begin by telling them that Jesus is the Son of God. And tell them that they were in their sins and Jesus died for their sins. Jesus was buried. But on the third day, he rose again from the dead. That anyone who believes in him will be saved. And tell them, if they will believe now, they will see the power of God. You may not feel anything, they may not feel anything. But you declare that, wait and see what the Holy Ghost will do. Wait! I learned this thing the hard way. I preach and I go to places where people clap hands for me for my intelligence. And unfortunately, the ministry began to grow. And I started going to places where my intelligence didn't mean anything to the people. I started going to places where my oratory didn't mean anything to the people. That was when I had to humble myself to preach the simplicity of the gospel. I told you how I went to Pakistan. When I was preaching, people were sleeping. And I could not dare just walk away from there. They had spent thousands of dollars mobilizing buses, over 40 buses, bringing the sick from different villages. You don't dare go there and say, give your heart to Christ and turn back. They will throw you to death. Do you know the pains we endured to come here? The deaf were there. The blind were there. The crippled were there. They were waiting to see the power of God. When I knew that my intelligence could not work, my mysteries could not work, I came back to the cross. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.23, we preach Christ and Him crucified. He said to the Greek is foolishness, to the Jews is a stumbling block. He said, but to us who have been saved, Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. Our generation has been taught emotion. And so we think power is feeling. Are you not tired? You have felt something for five years, nothing happened. You have sweated, nothing happened. Does it not suggest to you that something is wrong with what you are doing? There's nothing wrong with having feelings. Sometimes you can have feelings, but feelings are not reliable. What we are doing is not to generate feeling. What we are doing is to generate power. And the way to generate power is to preach a message that the Holy Ghost will validate. And that message is the gospel. Everyone who is a sent man, must know the gospel and preach it. 
I am giving this to you as a sermon and I'm also giving to you as a counsel. There are many places you will go to. All you will need is the validation of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Ghost does not validate men. It validates the world. And so if you don't preach the gospel, you will never see the validation of the Holy Spirit. He said they went and preached the word. Every saint man needs power. And the first key to power is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The second key to power is to preach the gospel. The third key to power is to have faith in the name of Jesus Christ. The apostles believed in the name of Jesus like it was their life. Peter was preaching in Acts 4.12. He said there is no name under heaven by which men must be saved. There is no name except the name of Jesus Christ. And so everywhere they went, they exalted that name. But see the problem with us. We think the name of Jesus is part of a religious cliche. So when somebody is in danger, Jesus, 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 you have to delete that thing from your mind. Sit down and ask yourself, why is this name so powerful? Understand why that name is powerful and build your faith on that name. In Acts chapter 3 verse 6, they were going to the place of prayer. They had not prayed. If they had prayed, you say they are charged. They had not prayed. And they saw a man who was lame at the beautiful gate. The Bible said he was lame from birth. And they brought him there every day to beg for arms. And the man looked at them and said, please give me something. And he said, the man was looking at them, hoping to receive something. Peter said, look on us. He said, silver and gold have I none. He said, such as I have, I give you. What does he have? Or what did he have? In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. See, if you have not invested enough thoughts, enough study on the name of Jesus to a point where when you are stranded, you can say Jesus and it's enough, you are not ready to be sent. Because one of the surest bailouts in life is faith in the name of Jesus. And I tell you quickly, why is the name of Jesus so powerful? Two reasons. The first reason is because of what that name contains. I shared it with them in Ghana two days ago. You know, when you are dealing with God, and please don't don't worry, I'm keeping the service calm because we're already sweating enough. <laughs> There's already too much energy here to generate any extra one. Glory to God. The Bible said that in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God created the heavens and the earth. What does that scripture suggest to you? God does not need introduction. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He just began to tell you about his exploit. Why? If he created us, then all of us intuitively know that he exists. So you don't need to introduce God to anybody. Why then are names given to God? The reason names are given to God is because the way to trap divine dimensions is by names. So every time God met a man, gives him an encounter, in order for that encounter to remain with him, a name will be allocated to that encounter. So that every time he mentioned that name, the resources of that encounter manifest again. So when he wanted to send Moses to Egypt, he manifested as Jehovah Yahweh. I am that I am. What does that mean? I am the author of all things and I have authority and rulership over all things. That means anything you need, anything you need me to be in any situation, I am that thing. That is the absolute power of God to judge and to deliver. But how we must carry this dimension to Egypt is that when you go to Egypt, say, I am have sent you. So every time you say I am, you are not introducing him. You are invoking that dimension. And we saw that that pattern was consistent in the Bible. When Abraham went in Genesis 22 to sacrifice his son and God provided the lamb, Abraham didn't live there. I have met one who provides, but I don't need him to provide only now. I need him to provide every day of my life. So what did Abraham do? He tied that encounter to a name and he called it Jehovah Jireh. That means every time I call Jireh, 
provision becomes normal. So the names of God are capsules that host dimensions of God. Hallelujah. Wow, this video is powerful. The Bible says that if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. This video you just watch now, we believe that it has increased strength in you and it has set burdens in your heart. If you are new, if you are new to this video, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the notification bell to get daily uploads, comments, like this video, and God will bless you. Thank you.